I, I don't understand. It makes no sense. Jacqueline, I do want to, I want to kick this to you because we've been having a lot of Mac centric talk here. So it feels only right to, to hit this now. Is Mac Jones the guy for you going forward? Do you want, is it, what do you evaluate off of this past season? Can you evaluate anything at all? So for me, it's so early in a sophomore season to tell, okay, we need to move away from this quarterback, especially when he's had two different offensive play callers in his first two seasons. Now, if this was still the same offensive play caller and he moved back this far because his stats were not, they weren't terrible this season. Like they weren't too far below where he was last year, but just from an eye test, you could tell like, he did not look nearly as confident as he did as a rookie, which is kind of crazy because you would think, you know, as years go on, you get more confident. Um, I think you reevaluate after next year. I think, I mean, if that's even going to say to my last point, like he's most likely, more likely than not, God willing, having a new you know, offensive play caller next year. So even then, can you tell? Because it's a new system. Um, but I think also his offensive line was not too great this season either. Um, and getting him, you know, an offensive line who actually tries to block people um, and then, you know, a capable play caller would be very beneficial for him. Um, it also, to me, doesn't seem, sorry, I keep going on, but it doesn't really seem like he's checking down all of his receivers. Um, he's going, you know, Hunter Henry, Hunter Henry, Hunter Henry, Jacoby overthrow, Hunter Henry. You know what I mean? And it's just not a sustainable way for him to continue to be a starting quarterback in this league if he doesn't, you know, use more than his favorite, his favorite targets. Jordan? Uh, Max salvaged a lot uh, of my opinion of him in the second half of the season. Like, I just quickly checked to confirm. Like, he had a passer rating over 90 in the last nine games of the season, which, I mean, it's not great. It would have ranked 19th in the league behind Tom Brady <laughs> by, like, 0.6. <laughs> just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, so maybe he is the second coming. He's just the second coming of the 45-year-old Tom Brady. Yikes. <laughs> Um, no, nah, but um, he salvaged a lot for me. He gave me enough confidence in him, in him in the second half of the season for me to be like, yeah, I'm not prepared to go and draft another quarterback this year or, you know, throw the bag at Lamar. I mean, actually, if Lamar Jackson was going to come here, I would probably throw the bag at him. But regardless, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, Max salvaged a lot of the sec in the second half of the season. What pissed me off the most was regardless of who his play caller was and his frustrations – he needs to be a little bit more composed and not let, because he, especially in that Raiders game, where he, like, threw that little hissy fit and then screwed up two plays in a row on the goal line. Like, that's how, that's on him. Like, he can be as mad as he wants to be at Matt Patricia, but if he's making, like, uh, there was the one play that he tried to rush a QB sneak into the end zone, and it was a legal formation because he didn't wait for the guy he was staring at to get set on the line. Like, mistakes like that, he needs to clean up for year three. But really, I mean, what we've seen in the NFL lately is like with Jalen Hurts, he got his elite wide receiver one, and he became great MVP candidate. Josh Allen, same deal. Tua probably would have been had he not, you know, gotten 72 concussions this season. Probably would have been in the MVP race as well, getting Tyreek Hill. So if you get Mack a legit number one and run it back with, I would keep Parker. I would keep Kendrick Bourne if he's willing to stay. I'd bring back Jacoby Myers and put him strictly in the slot and not send him on deep routes all the time and then let Tyquan Thornton continue to develop behind them. And then, you know, just see what you got with at tight end and let Mac – give Mac a, a year with a legitimate play caller and just see what happens. I'm not going to say he's the guy, but I'm not. he's not not the guy, you know? All right, I got, I got a lot yet. of stuff, so I'm going to rifle through this very quickly and I want to see what you guys think about this. Number one, um, I completely agree. Uh, I think it's been kind of overblown, his failures of this year. Totally agree with Jordan. I think the the emotional pitching a fit and throwing a temper tantrum it absolutely annoys the crap out of me. At a certain point, I understand you doing it once. That's fine, honestly, in my opinion. It shows that, A, you care, which I always want to see out of my guys. But also, the fact that like you're unhappy, 
we get it. Like, we do. I think we as fans understand that he was put in a really hard position this year. But at a certain point, when it's game after game, because he went from the Bills game to the Cardinals game to the Raiders game, and I think he had a couple towards the end of the season as well, Bengals game, it's like, dude, at a certain point, shut up. I don't care. We all (laughs) understand that you're going through a hard time right now, and it's not easy. But guess what? You throw, you pitching a fit does not help. And I honest, I think that's part of why he does these dirty, quote unquote. I'm gonna call him the greatest now in the NFL until he kind of, he figures his crap out. Because him taking out Eli Apple on that play was dirty. Him doing the same, doing trying to pull Brian Burns' leg last year was dirty. Part of it is I think that he doesn't have that composure that Jordan's talking about. I think he lashes out in the moment, and while he isn't necessarily a dirty player, he does dirty plays because he loses his head and sees red on a play where he thought he turned the ball over, went over and said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this guy's legs out behind the play, not even the guy with the ball, which is a penalty anyway, but it got worse because it looked that dirty and he went for the legs. Like, you can't do He's that. He's like a child. Exactly, exactly. And he's got to work on that. I don't care who the play caller is. That's not something that I can teach you. You have to learn that yourself at a certain point. You're 24. I would hope that you would learn it now, but you haven't. So figure it out quickly. Yeah, Jordan, sorry. Really quickly, really quickly. I sent this text, I believe, in in our group chat during, I want to say, I don't think it was the Bills game. I think it was the week after, where I'm like, He's nowhere near good enough to be doing this. Like, with, like Brady throws his so, fits on the sideline. But he's the greatest it, quarterback of all time. He's got a resume. He is allowed to be a little bit of a dink to his teammates because he's earned that, <laughs> you know, he's got that aura about him. Mac Jones is an unproven second-year quarterback. You cannot be throwing hissy fits on the sideline every time you screw up just because you're mad at, at the situation. It, it's just, it, it was just, it was inexcusable from him, too. He's here's the catch. Here's the all. catch I mean, twenty two. Here's the catch twenty two here, and this is the part that I have a really hard time reconciling in my brain is the fact that Mac is not good enough because he's only had two seasons of NFL experience to be whining and bitching at his coaches. The problem is the coaches are so inept he's right to be able to bitch, and it's both of those yeah. things are absolutely true, and it's not possible for me to separate the two and be like, all right, this one's clearly at fault, this one's clearly at fault. They both deserve blame, and it annoys me because I like to have one person to blame and get mad at. Third of all. <laughs> The situation around him was terrible, and I think it, is, it, it goes a long way to saying, like, not everything was on him, but it also isn't just on the play calling. The offensive line, also coached by the boo-boo does the play calling, sucked this year. They were terrible. Trent Brown was checked out half the time. Isaiah Wynn, my he God. He had 13 penalties. <laughs> and Wynn or, Wynn or Trent Brown? Brown. Uh, I was going to say, I, I think Wynn could get 13, be, and I, I think he only played in, like, eight games. So, wouldn't have surprised me. Yeah, George. Yeah, yeah, I mean Trent, Trent Brown and Isaiah Wynn as your two tackles were like two brain cells fighting for third place. Like it was really, <laughs> it was really bad. Both of them were awful. Trent Brown, especially considering the kind of pedigree he has and how great he was last time he was in New England, how good he was last season. I didn't understand that either. The whole they brought him back and then they just switched sides. Like Trent Brown was good at right tackle last year. Isaiah Wynn was fine at left tackle last year. Why the hell did you cheat? Why did you switch it? It didn't make any sense to me. Trent Brown is lazy as hell now. He's he literally. It was like the uh, what we used to make fun of with Marshall Newhouse, where he the 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 old security guard that's like patting people down but without even touching them to see if they have any weapons on them. That was Trent Brown trying to block. He was atrocious all season. I'd be willing to say he was the most disappointing player on the offense entirely. Was him. I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily go that far, but give, give me a second here. Because Cole Strange, being a first-round pick, he was only good when David Andrews was near him. Um, Bedard, who knows a lot more about this than I do, big into the fatty line play. He, he knows, you know, Cole Strange is good, but David Andrews has to help himself a lot. Because it uh, has to help him a lot, excuse me. On when who can take care of himself on the right side. Andrews had a concussion midway through the season and missed like three weeks. He had that thigh problem as well, couldn't go on Thursday night. Cole Strange was god-awful. And also, hit the buffet, dude. I need to see you with, like, 50 pounds more because you were light. You looked really small. You looked like a, a thin bowling ball out there, which was not good for a left guard. That's not what I want to see. Third of all, I guess He's the like receivers... a candle pin bowling ball, not exactly. like a big Little ball tiny ones that you can, you, can, you can palm. Yeah. The, the I third also want to add to that, yeah. that was a hole that Bill Belichick created for no reason. You don't yeah. trade a good right guard to draft another guard in the first round. You drafted Mike Onwenu in the sixth round. You didn't need to spend a first-round pick on a guard. Yeah, especially, especially not a light you guard. You traded a good guard. <laughs> you traded a you, good you guard. You got helium you created guard. A hole got. And then, you created a hole and then filled it in the first round for no reason. Like, you had other issues, man. 
Anyway, and then sorry, finally, Jeremy. yeah, the, no, the <laughs> weapons were also a problem. I mean, I, I saw a breakdown of this. Jacoby Myers and Tyquan Thornton, for some reason, instead of running out routes the entire year, they would go and run instead of, you know, a, a good out route is 90 degrees. Good receivers break back to the ball. Bad receivers fade outwards at a 45. Middle of the road receivers do the 90. They did 45s. So they would fade out. So Mac Jones, when he would miss short to guys, he's thinking that they're going to run straight to the sideline. They don't. Kendrick Bourne. When he did get on the field, he was half, half the time it was illegal shifts and false starts and all these really stupid plays. And then he would ball when he was there, but the coaching staff hated him, so they didn't play him. So instead, they played Tyquan Thornton, who would run into guys half the time or be right in their area and make it so that we could... Jonu Smith did not play the final two games of the season because he got concussed against the Bengals. You know why? It's because I want to say it was either Myers or Thornton was over on the right side with him and put two defenders in Jonu's face instead of one. He shouldn't have been there. They were sitting like as far away as I am from this door right here John who gets concussed because he gets sandwiched between two helmets like stuff like that that at a certain at a certain point that's not on the play calling you got to run the right route boss like I don't know what to tell you but part of it is also on the play calling because they couldn't create space for the guys what, what was the play that Henry and um Henry and John collided with each other they on the first right into each yeah, other yeah exactly like Henry stuff stuff, stuff game, like that the game you lost by one score cross cross a crossing route I'm pretty sure the coaching staff can tell you that and you and I would know enough to not run into the guy that I'm like that's not coaching that's players so at a certain point that's the players weren't sense. yeah the players weren't buying in like it, it goes it, it all it all comes together in just one pile of blah and that was basically like what it was to watch the Patriots the entire season absolutely frustrating beyond belief.